The House comes to question for all answer. Question number one, in the name of Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Land Information and asks, why is her government planning to hike overseas investment office application fees? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Louise Upston. The government is planning to increase most OIO application fees to fund improvements for faster application screening by the Overseas Investment Office and more responsive monitoring and enforcement. Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, what warning is a rise in fees sending to foreign buyers who are not of good character but have the wealth to disguise the truth? The Honourable Louise Upston. Uh, Mr Speaker, the, the fees review is predominantly around uh, giving investors greater certainty around the timing and the length of time that an application takes. Currently it is about 90 days. Investor feedback has been that uh, they want that to be turned around faster. And we're looking at a 20% uh, 20 improvement. Supplementary. Order. Supplementary question, Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, why won't the government tell foreigners that they must present straightforward applications in which the owner and their background is clearly detailed and authenticated? The Honourable Louise Upson. Mr Speaker, uh, the Overseas Investment Office uh, does work with applicants to ensure they're clear about the 23 criteria involved. Uh, one of which is the good uh, character test. Uh, to give you an example of consents this year uh, that have been uh, rejected right from day one, 57 per cent have been rejected. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Ron Mark. To the Minister, why should a foreign owner who is later found to have lied not have to forfeit the New Zealand asset they purchased? without compensation. Uh, the Honourable Louise Upson. The Overseas Investment Office legislation is clear and one of the conditions of consent uh, of most of the approvals is that they must remain of good character. And if the Overseas Investment Office finds that the applicant uh, loses that good character status, uh, there are a number of enforcement actions, including the forced sale, uh, and we have seen an example of that up north. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, why doesn't the Minister just admit that these changes fit more into the government's promise to, to China to speed up the rubber stamp than the public's desire for more transparency and better due, due diligence. Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Louise Upston. Uh, I, I, I refute that and I want to give an example of uh, the importance of foreign investment to regions in New Zealand, uh, including Masterton, where uh, Premier Beehive Meats that employs 150 staff in that member's very area, bought by Australians, uh, put over a million dollars of investment into that business which I would have thought that member supports. Yeah. Foreign investment, Mr Speaker, is district, clearly an important part of growing our regions. You were the mayor at the time. A supplementary question, Joanne Hayes. Thank you. Can the minister provide more information about the review? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Louise Upston. Uh, Mr Speaker, the review that has uh, been undertaken has been underway for quite some time. And it has been looking at both the balance of the time that it's taken to process applications if we need target exemptions and the need to provide greater certainty about the status of applications. Law firms, Business New Zealand, Federated Farmers amongst others have been consulted and it's their feedback that we've taken into consideration with the decisions that have been made. Question 